can you see anything? Can you see my presentation at all, Sally? Yeah, we can see your presentation. You just need to press the okay. um, slides show. Yeah. yeah. Questions coming, everybody. Okay. So I tried to think of a food analogy like everyone else, but I really can't think of one for the fourth uh, presentation here. So we're very excited to share 45 and up. I, I, think, um, I think most of you would have heard something about it in the past. Um, so this is just a, a sort of a high level descriptor. Happy to take any um, questions today or any follow up questions you all might have. Um, but just to go to the, the big picture, I guess, to start with, um, people would probably be aware that 45 and up's the largest study in Australia, over 267,000 participants set up back in 2006. And we recruited through the Medicare database at that time. Um, lots of different data available through 45 and up. The key things most people are interested in is usually the questionnaire data that's linked to MBS and PBS, as well as the New South Wales administrative records, which I'll, I'll go through a bit more detail in a second. Um, part of the study that not many people know about is we do have biological samples, blood samples from around 5,000 participants. And um, similar to the um, presentation Julie gave earlier today, we do have a series of sub-studies going on within 45 and up. Some of them are probably more better classified as intervention studies and, and also recruitment to different research projects from within 45 and up. So importantly um, for this conversation, you know, 45 and up was established as a research resource. So we, we do see it as infrastructure that's for the use of researchers and in fact, policy agencies and government as well. Um, and over the years since it's been established, we've had about 150 different projects using 45 and up data. And there's a really broad range of different, um, different sort of focus areas across those projects. So I picked a couple here, you know, there's lots of different work on the nexus, I guess, between environment and health, lots of different work done on mental health trajectories of people in 45 and up, certainly the associations of various risk factors and chronic disease outcomes, and lots of different health services research going on. But it is really difficult to sort of capture the sort of breadth and depth of the sort of studies that are going on in 45 and up at any one time. There's been around 800 researchers used the study across about 90 different organizations and 400 papers. And um, sort of importantly from the SACSIS perspective also around 30 different policy agencies have used the data from the study in, in various ways. So just to talk about the, the data itself in a bit more detail. So we, we have um, survey data through three rounds of follow-up from participants. And you can see on the far left-hand slide here, the periods of time in which we followed up with participants for both baseline and the first and second follow-ups. And then we have linked data, MBS and PBS, lots of administrative data sets in New South Wales and, and the Commonwealth, in, including the aged care data sets. And then this um, sort of broad consent that participants have um, signed up to, to, to link their data for health research purposes um, uh, from, from lots of different data set sources. So we're, um, we've been exploring in recent times um, some new linkages to pathology data, to primary care data sets that we don't have access to at the moment. And so there's always um, an ongoing opportunity to link additional data sets to, to 45 and up. Around 17 are, are routinely linked. Then we've got the biospecimens that I talked about before. We've got about 5,000 blood samples from participants and, and that area is growing. We're, we're um, uh, collecting more blood from participants at the moment. We do have a number of those samples that have been whole genome sequenced and they're used by genomics researchers. So there's certainly an opportunity to expand that area and, and part of the the rationale we have by, from uh, collecting blood samples is to make them available for omics and other sorts of research. They're all stored in the, in the New South Wales Biobank, which is a, a recently established facility uh, in New South Wales. And then on the far right-hand side of this slide, I, I sort of draw out a couple of the cohorts of interest within 45 and up. So you can see something about the volume of different sorts of conditions there within the population. Um, two, two points to make, I suppose, during uh, the COVID era, as I guess you could call it, during the last sort of 12 to 18 months, we've established a, a COVID cohort of around 62,000 people in within 45 and up. And those are people that have um, responded to a series of COVID surveys, which I'll talk about a bit more in a second. And then there's around 2,000 um, people of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background in the study as well, which is one of the largest um, cohorts of Aboriginal people in the country. So all the um, survey data, uh, so all the questionnaires that have gone out to participants are available on our website. So I just wanted to give a very quick snapshot of what we're covering in, in the core survey. So that's the, 
the baseline survey and the uh, um, two rounds of follow-up. We generally cover these sorts of topics. So some basic information about overall health and quality of life, some measures around mental health and risk factors, some things around people's social supports and their housing and financial situation. And then in each of the, um, each of the follow-ups, there's a different set of questions that are generated from uh, some engagement with the, the research and policy community leading up to the, the, um, the, the survey um, being in the field. So all of these questions um, uh, sort of stem from the original setup of the study back in 2006, the core questions, and they were, um, you know, they benefited from incredible input and expertise from the research community at that time. So both the concepts and questions are, 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 have had a lot of use and a lot of examination since they were first set up. And then more recently, um, we followed a similar process when, when COVID was first emerging and pulled together a pretty broad group of researchers with lots of different interests to try and um, develop some questions that could help us understand at first the, the impact of the restrictions on COVID and, and subsequently things like people's attitudes towards vaccination and the changing pattern of, of their health service use. So as I mentioned just briefly earlier, there's around um, 60,000 people in the study that have answered questions on these sorts of topics. Um, this is an ongoing piece of work for us. We've now done three COVID surveys of participants and we're about to, um, oh, we're in the field at the moment actually um, with a survey focused on intentions and behaviours around vaccination, as you can imagine, a very important issue right now. So there's, um, there's some more, uh, we, call, we call these rapid surveys, there's some more rapid COVID surveys likely to um, be undertaken later this year as well. So if people have got particular interests around COVID itself and its impact on the population, or in fact, um, the, the sorts of changes in health services use and people's um, knowledge of COVID and health literacy, there's lots to, that can be done with the study on those things. So next, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, access to the study for ECR um, use. So somewhat differently um, to the longitudinal women's study, um, 45 and up doesn't have the same type of funding arrangements. We do have um, some long-standing support from some partners, which is fantastic and, and helps us maintain the study. But the typical um, user of 45 and up would build costs associated with accessing the data into their research proposals. And then some of that funding would come to the SACs to support use. So that's the typical pathway, but we have been exploring some three different sorts of pathways, particularly focused on ECR access. And um, some of you on the call have, have probably heard, heard some of these ideas before and we're in discussion with you about them, but happy to um, further explore these with people that are interested. So, that, so the first is looking at setting up an arrangement with a particular university or, or perhaps large institution that enables uncapped access for ECRs to, the, to all the data sets that I just went through that, that make up 45 and up. To, to support that, we need to agree some sort of arrangement between the Institute and the university, and that would enable us to coordinate large scale access to the, to the study across the institution. So we're really interested in trying this out. And I think we consider all the ideas on this slide kind of demonstration projects or, or, or pilots. And the second one is in fact a demonstration project itself. So we're quite interested in people that have got big ideas for things that they want to apply for research funds for, whether they be things that are suitable for MRFF funding or future NHMRC funds, and whether we can um, further develop some of those proposals through giving early access to people, maybe for 12 months, to develop up some ideas in further detail, um, ideas that have high potential for those larger research funding opportunities. And the third opportunity that we see a, a lot more of in recent times is the potential to develop some collaborative projects with some policy partners. So um, the Sachs Institute's got a wide diversity of stakeholders that we work with, including within government and, and the NGO sector. So a lot of those existing relationships, we could draw um, uh, the, the sort of information gaps that people have in those um, policy partners together with some of the expertise and interests of people within the ECR community to do some work on some, um, some topics of interest. So, so some of those would include things like aging and COVID and mental health, which are, are really prominent at the moment amongst our policy partners as key priorities. But I'm sure amongst amongst this group, there's there's lots of um, there's lots of people that will have relationships that we don't know about that, that might also be suitable for some sort of collaborative projects where we we bring together um, the government and the NGO sector along with um, the researchers um, to to sort of look into what can be done with 45 and up to meet an information gap or an evidence need that people might have. So those are three ideas that we've been having internally, um, and there, I'm certain I'm certain there's lots of other ideas that people could come up with about how to 
enable use of um, uh, 45 and up through by ECR. So happy to hear about any other suggestions people might have. I just want to go to some of the, the assistance um, that the Sachs Institute can provide um, as well. So, so clearly people um, would have questions about what sort of data is available over what sort of periods and, and what it consists of. So we can certainly help with that. We do provide support around ethics and data custodian approvals. There's lots of work that goes into the front end of planning studies with 45 and up, certainly around design and methods, as well as the feasibility of different research questions. And then um, importantly, we can also connect with other researchers that have um, maybe done similar work or use similar methods within 45 and up and in, in, and in fact elsewhere outside of 45 and up that can be useful as well. So that were the main things I was gonna to touch on in relation to 45 and up. I did just wanna bring up one other study that um, uh, we work on in a collaboration at the Sachs Institute called SEARCH. It's the study of environment and resilience on child health. It's a partnership between four Aboriginal community controlled health services, the AHMRC and the SACS. And this has also been going for a long time. We've got 1600 children in the cohort, or many of them are actually, in fact, not children anymore, but when they were first enrolled into this um, program, they were children. And we've been following them for 14 years with a series of questionnaires and, and surveys, as well as um, linked data, MBS and PBS, and the administrative data sets. We also have a, a lot of qualitative measures available on the social and emotional well-being of these children and, and other factors affecting their health and well-being. So this is a, a research partnership that's heavily driven by those four Aboriginal community controlled health services. The, it's their priorities that, um, that um, set out what the research questions will be. But if people are interested in getting involved in some of this work, we, we do have a lot more data and a lot more potential than we're able to make use of at the moment. And, and in fact, a lot more use, a lot more interest across the Aboriginal community controlled health services to do more with that data set. So I'm um, more than happy to um, have some separate conversations about what might be possible um, through the search as well. So just uh, to finish up, there's some, some ways to find out more. Certainly happy to have some more conversations about all this. There's lots of information on the Sachs Institute's website about the typical pathways of getting access to 45 and up. I've raised a couple of different options in this um, presentation, which we can talk about as well. But if you want to go the typical pathway, you can get a lot of that information on the website, along with things like the, the questionnaires that have gone out and the sorts of data sets that are available. That's my email address. There's also the um, 45 and up research team's email. And if you're interested in search specifically, Sumi is the, the director of um, the search program and we can arrange a conversation with her to sort of explore what's possible there also. So I might leave it there, Sally, and, 